there's something a lot of people go through that you can't keep doing to yourself. Otherwise, you're going to fall into the world and you're going to slip up and give up your Christianity. So let me stress this again, okay? It's a lot of people uh, give up Christianity and fall away because there is something that they fail to do. Especially our young people, you see too many of them falling away from Christianity and become falling into the world. The reason why is this, is because there's a thing called righteous repression. They're so repressed. So there's a thing about being overt too much righteous. Didn't you know that? Well, you can't be too much righteous. Well, there can be, actually. Look at Ecclesiastes 7, and then we will read verse 16. It's not good to be too much righteous. I mean, look at, look at the wisest man in the world, what he said right here. And then the Lord put it as part of Scripture. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou what? Destroyest thyself. Why would that happen? Why does too much righteousness cause you to destroy yourself? Because the reason why is if you add more chapters in the Bible reading, you add more hours in soul winning, you add uh, more things in your life where you're trying to spend time with God and then maintain holiness, you add more rules and more rules to be more spiritual, more spiritual, you know what happens? There's to a certain limit where you can't take it anymore. And then you destroy yourself, you break down, and there are some people actually, now this is the problem with some, uh, I think they were uh, Puritans, that's right. Th this is the problem with a lot of Puritans that time. A lot of them, because they put so many standards, they always lived a life of depression. It's no wonder they almost committed suicide. It's because they were destroying themselves. So it is very important you can't be righteous over much. It's very interesting most of those Puritans were Calvinists. In fact, if you read a lot, writing a lot of these Calvinists, okay, it might sound good, uh, sovereignty of God, sovereignty of God, sovereignty of God. But because they raised that so much, they got under so much pressure where they can't use such free will to enjoy some things in their own free will in life, and then they almost destroyed themselves. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> we'll look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> it's not wrong to use the world. Can I repeat that again? I hope that didn't sound like blasphemy to you. There's nothing wrong with using and enjoying things in the world. The only thing that becomes a sin is when it clearly contradicts Scripture and it clearly contradicts your spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. If it's clearly contradicting holiness, then you avoid it. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, <clears throat> and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. So notice, <clears throat> Paul right here, he's talking about these people who start to weep excessively, rejoice excessively, do these things excessively because they never done it before, it seems like. As if they repress themselves so much they never did it before. So there's a problem, see, with repressing so much. And when you repress so much, you can become excessive in those things. Let's keep reading. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Now look at that, see? It only becomes sin when you use the world excessively, abusing it. And where it contradicts clearly with scripture and holiness. That's where it becomes sin. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 through 31, Paul warns, Paul shows using the world is not a sin. It's only when you abuse it that's a sin. Abusing is sin. Using the world is not a sin. But he also showed you in those verses, because they never used such means, 
they became excessive in it right so that's the problem if you don't use the world pretty soon you're going to be abusing it become excessive and that's a matter of fact truth with a lot of churches today is because they repress so much and then add so many rules they become so legalistic children what happens because they're so used to being repressed in the home what happens they can't wait to get out of home and go to college why so that they can and then they just go boom like that to the world see that becomes very dangerous right there all right let's also look at Ephesians 2 Ephesians 2 but let me give you uh, it's really interesting when I study celebrities it's really interesting when I study them how many of them had Christian upbringings didn't you know that there are such stars and celebrities who had some kind of church or Christian upbringing and then what boggled my mind is how did they become one of the most wicked people and the most famous people that Satan used for example uh, Elvis Presley he was raised in churches but guess what he became the most famous singer and then the one who made way for rock and roll and other contemporary music. Jerry Lee Lewis, what a messed up guy. He married his cousin. But you know that guy? He used to be raised in church. And not only that, he even realized that contemporary music is the devil's music. He even argued against his music producers that this is not neutral music. This is Satan's music right here. See, he had some sense. Uh, if you look at other celebrities and movie stars, you'll find out that because they live such life of repression, they would just went all the way and become really wicked at the end. <clears throat> Not only that, as I dug deeper into celebrities, you know what's even more interesting? What's more interesting is even this. The, uh, the most low down or the most filthy kind of stars, Hollywood star, would be porn who used to be raised up in Christian upbringing. But because they lived their life in such repression, they went totally bogus down to the filthy road. That's extremely sad. I mean, when you, you gotta realize this, when you study Hollywood, the lives of all these celebrities, you'd be surprised how many of them, why they wouldn't hesitate becoming liberal, the extreme kind of leftism, and totally anti-Christian. You know why? A lot of them, used to be raised up in Christian upbringing. And with such repression, they went excessively into the other side, into the world and into wickedness. Let's also look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we will read verses 2 through 5. Verses 2 through 5. Here's the key thing. Now, this is something important, especially young people. You know why young people fall into your generation, your children fall into the world? Here's the thing. No matter how much restriction you make them live in holiness, it can become repression where they abuse the world. You might say, well, pastor, how can I get them to see that it's not repression? Not only that for you, too, where you don't feel like it's repression. Here's the key. Is your heart in it? God told you a long time ago, many verses, when you serve me, I don't want you to just do it religiously or to do it for vain glory. I want you to do it with your heart. Look at the Ephesians. Look at right here. Uh, excuse me, not Ephesians uh, 2. It should be uh, Revelation 2. Revelation 2. <laughs> The reason why I said Ephesian right here is because of the church of Ephesus, that's why. So look at Revelation 2, verses 2 through 5. Notice right here, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patient, and for my name's sake hast labor. And has not fainted. See that? These guys were zealous all the way, like righteous and zealous serving God. But look at this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy what? First love. That's the basic first. The basic first is, do you love Jesus? 
Do you love singing that hymn, praying to the Lord, reading the Bible? If your heart's not in it, then no matter how many church services you take your child, if that child's heart is not in it, then that person will be repressed and fall bogus into the world later on once that person's released. So what's extremely important with your children and when you raise them, and not only children, you yourself, because if you feel like you're going to fall into the world because you're repressing, what you need to do is stop Bible reading. And I mean that. Stop Bible reading, stop praying, stop all this stuff. Check your heart and pray to the Lord desperately. Remind me once more to love you, Lord. That's what you need to do. You need to tell God, God, I need you to help me. Remind me why I should love this, why this is better than the world. You know what? what's the secret with me, why I didn't fell away in Berkeley and why I kept on in the ministry? Especially at a young age. I lived a life of Christian holiness, raised in a Christian family. So there, were, there was that repression and the, that worldly attraction, the curiosity and the interest, interest of falling into the world. You know what rescued my life? Compared to a lot of other young people, this is what I did. I refused to keep doing these things just out of tradition because mom and dad said so. Now, I want you second generation Christians, listen up here. This is your problem. And this is what I'm going to rebuke you with. you got a problem with this. you got to realize you can't just go to church, sing a hymn, and do this stuff just because mommy and daddy did it. Just out of tradition. This is you yourself. Why will you do it? What does this mean to you? You know why I became smarter in doc doctrine? Because I realized, what does this mean to me? When I was, I hated soul winning. I don't know if you all knew that. I hated soul winning. But then when I bumped into a Muslim and then he uh, stumped me in some verses, that really got me. And then I realized, I can't just keep doing the same thing anymore. And then that gave me an eagerness to study more and study more. And then now I became the person that I am today. What does it mean to you, huh? Whatever pastor's teaching and preaching, you can't just listen to it one year out the other. You've got to realize this. Why is this important to me? And the message that you think is an unimportant message or a message you think that's repetitious. Oh, I know this stuff. I already know this. No, 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 don't do that. You've got to realize this. Why is this important to me? Why does God let this preacher preach this same sermon or this teaching again. Heart. It's all about heart. Why am I singing this hymn? What does each and every word mean to me? I know when some of you sing these hymns, some of these words, you don't pay attention to every word. You just sing through it. If you paid attention to every word, you would be shouting in between in the hymns, right? Sometimes you might hear me shout in the middle of singing. Do you know why? I'm paying attention to a word somewhere. I guarantee you this. You're not going to last in San Jose Bible Baptist Church if your heart's not in it. This is good stuff, man. This is teaching right here. It's really important. You know why? Because then you're going to live your life as a tradition and repression. And then you're going to mess up your life. It's all about heart. Jesus Christ don't want you to serve him unless it's heart in it. Now, here's the thing. You might be saying, well, pastor, I want to put my heart in it, but it's really hard. So does that mean I have to quit attending church, quit soul winning, quit Bible reading? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, What I'm saying is this. You need to stop what you're doing and seriously reflect. That's the point. But after you seriously reflected yourself and try to find and search for something where you can restore that first love again, what you need to do is, in the meantime, keep up your Bible reading, keep praying, keep going to church, keep soul winning, and then keep searching for that first love and begging to the Lord. Restore to Him. Because what happens is this. What happens is, what happens is, first it's out of habit and duty. But pretty soon it becomes something you become used to. And the Lord teaches you in journey in life what's important about it, little by little. And then your love for Him starts to grow more and more and more. So that's my advice is to not quit. Keep doing that. But don't just keep doing it without seriously first reflecting yourself and remembering first love. The Bible said it perfectly. First love. First love. First. 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 Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, 20 through 23. We won't turn there for time's sake. We won't turn there for time's sake. But in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, 
and 20 through 23, God, he truly hates tradition of religion. He hates that. See that? He hates tradition of religion. What he wants is a relationship. See that? Now, why are you soul winning? Because of your relationship with Jesus Christ? Or is it because it's by tradition of what you were raised to do? Man, you guys easily forget. Um, the thing, the people I get grieved the most, I don't know if you all know, knew this, but before I became a pastor, before I ever had a burden for anybody, before I pastored this church in San Francisco Bay Area, or even had a burden for educated people, which is why I went to Berkeley, you know who were the very first people I had a burden for? Young people. You know why? Because I was a young person raised up like that. And I was so sick and tired and grieved of seeing young people in church. And I'm going to preach at you Bible-believing churches out there. You young kids better listen up right here because I'm in your shoes. I get sick and tired of seeing you guys just coming to church because mommy and daddy made you. Where your heart's not in it. you got to stop being a brat right now. Seriously reflect yourself and say, why am I doing all this? And I promise you it will change your life forever. You guys were my first burden. You got to understand. You guys were my first burden. And I loved you guys first before I ever became a pastor. And that has never left me. If I can go back to being a youth teacher, I'd do it all over again. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 is one more thing that I want to close with. Because this is extremely important. It says, love not the world. Why? Because if you love not the world, you got to love not the world. Because if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. You know why you get too repressed in your walk with Jesus Christ and being raised in a Bible-believing church and you fall into the world? The key thing is this. This is something that will help you immensely not to fall into the world. You know why you fall into the world? The world is too attractive to you. It's stirring up your love. I want to love the Father, but how do I do that? You know why your love of the Father is weakening and your love for the world is increasing? Because the world is tempting you, attracting you more and more, increasing your love. I promise you this. As you increase your love for the world, your love for the Father will lessen. I promise you. And until you stop and say, I want to love the Father more than the world, then you have hope. But if you won't do that, I promise you this, you won't last long in church. I like how the Bible says, it says love not, right? Do you know what love not means? It means hate. That's how you'll not fall into the world, is if you hate it. Do you hate the movie? Do you hate that video game? Do you hate the crowd that you're hanging around with? Do you hate the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the pretty boy, the pretty girl? Do you hate... Uh, Hollywood, do you hate fornication? Do you hate drinking drugs? See, until you can start to hate it, you got to do that. You got to say, Lord, I'm having a hard time. I love it. Teach me to hate. And when you hate it, and as that thing tries to pretty itself, and you know that that ugly thing is pr prettying itself, and you go, I know what you're doing. You're deceiving me. You're tricking me. I hate that. Then you won't fall into it. That's how people fall into the world, because they are so repressed. I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't live your life in repression. Don't keep coming to church, praying, reading your Bible, so winning. Stop that right now. All right? You're going to repress yourself and fall completely into the world, and you'll be one of the most wicked liberals who will ever live in Hollywood, in educated schools, and even in life. You'll be one of the worst Christians ever. Didn't you know a lot of atheists used to be Christians? Bart Ehrman used to be raised in a fundamental Christian belief that every word of God is perfect before he became the worst Bible critic ever. I'm telling you, man. I told you about the, the filthiest kind of stars to the, to the worst kind of atheist scholars. There's a lot of truth with Christian background repression. You can become the worst things. That's why Second Peter, you know what? Uh, I said that was the last verse. This is the last verse I want you to turn to. Go to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2. It speaks volumes here. Look at 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2. Now look at this. 
This is so interesting what the Bible says. In fact, God never wanted you to live for him to begin with then, to be a Christian. 2 Peter 2.20 For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See that? You escape through that by knowing Jesus Christ and you're trying to live and walk in him. They are a tangled, again, a tangled therein. See, back to the corruption of the world. And overcome. The latter end is worse than them than the what? Beginning. Now look what God said at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. God really meant that. See, that is serious right there. God, he doesn't want you. Stop attending San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Stop attending Bible Baptist Church International. Stop attending Bible Baptist Church at Pensacola, Florida. Stop attending that. Young people and you people who are struggling with this, don't do that. God would not have wanted you to do that to begin with. Because with all that repression, you can become one of the worst people who ever lived. I know of Bible believers, I mean King James only dispensational Bible believers who became sodomites. And I'm not lying about that. I know of Bible believers who became one of the worst people who ever lived. So I'm telling you this. This is something Satan will use. So one, look, enjoy life, all right? Don't be restricted by too many rules. Enjoy the world. If it becomes in a way where it ruins your holy testimony as a Christian, that's why we avoid worldliness. We stress so much about the right kind of dressing, the right kind of music, okay? So we stress that. But here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with having fun in games and then what you watch, what you play online, and what you play outside, the people you even hang around with too, all right? Just don't abuse it, though, where it leads you to sin. Another thing is, do you, do you remember what you first loved? Otherwise, everything you do is pointless. And another thing, what can help you immensely is to start hating. If you can't do that, you better start praying to the Lord. If you won't follow my advice after this in stopping the video and taking time to seriously reflect yourself and pray, you wasted your time watching this. And I hope that people online, especially the first generation Christians, will share this with a lot of their children. This is so important for them because I am like one of them. I used to be that way. So I'm begging you to please do this. Everything that I said hard right here is done out of love because I know how bad it is and I have a burden for you young people.